Okay, so we're going to start this uh, webinar. Uh, can everyone hear me? Um, so hi, everyone. I uh, hope everyone is doing great. Uh, thank you for registering to this webinar on study in France for undergraduates programs. So my name is uh, Ellen. And I'm the French Deputy Director of MFUC, Malaysia France University Centre, and also representative of Campus France uh, in uh, Malaysia. So uh, regarding the programme for, for today, so um, we will have a presentation by myself on studying France for undergraduates programme. Um, then at 4.30pm, we will have a presentation on uh, ESX School of Management by uh, Mr. Marc Porto, uh, Regional Manager for Mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore. Uh, then at 4.45 p.m., we will have a presentation on Sciences Po uh, by Ms. Mariana Lozada, uh, Regional uh, Director, Southeast Asia, Université de Paris, Sciences Po. And then at 5 p.m., we will have a presentation on uh, Inflexion, Centre Interculturel uh, Francais de Lyon by Dr. Arnaud Duquesne, uh, Director of Inflexion. And then to finish with this webinar, we will have at 5.15, a presentation on life and study in France uh, by our alumni, uh, mostly, Mr. Mosley Yeo. Um, then at the end of all these presentations, we will have a question and answer session. So uh, feel free to uh, type your question in the text box uh, and we will answer your question at the end of this uh, webinar. So. Um. so, presentation. Okay, so I will start this presentation. I hope everyone can see uh, my screen now. Okay, so, uh, so as I said, just to introduce ourselves, so we are MFUC, uh, Malaysia France University Center, um, and our uh, uh, role is to reinforce the cooperation between France and Malaysia uh, in higher education and research. Uh, also to find uh, programs that best match the needs of Malaysian and French students, according to their area of interest, uh, and then providing advice to students for their stay in France. So I will start this uh, webinar session by showing you a video by Campus France. Okay, yeah. Start the video from the start, because I think, yeah.
Okay. So I hope you enjoy the video. So now I will start with uh, to give you some of the reasons to study in France. So uh, first, why to study in France? Uh, simply because of the quality of life. So as you may know, uh, France has a very pleasant, diverse environment in the, located in the heart of Europe. Uh, in France, you also have like a rich cultural life. So with many monuments, uh, protected sites, uh, museums, cinemas, many cultural sites appearing on the UNESCO uh, list, for example. So yeah, from the Eiffel Tower in Paris, Lavender Field in the south of France, uh, Mediterranean coast, or the ski resorts in the Alps, you have many places to visit while uh, you study in France. Uh, then another reason is uh, the, the cost of living. So, uh, for example, to give you an idea, the average student budget per month in France, uh, for, of course, in Paris, it is more expensive because it's a capital city. So it will be uh, 1,000 euros in Paris, so about 4,700 ringgit. Uh, but in other regions, for example, it's more around 600 euros. And as a student, you have access to, uh, for example, university restaurants or dormitories. Uh, you have student cards, which give you discounts in shops, uh, reduction in the uh, transportation also, and also a special discounts for cultural and sports events. So regarding the, the degrees and the tuition fees per year, uh, so this is um, uh, regarding the public universities. So these are the, the new fees. Uh, so for example, for the bachelor degree, in most university, uh, the the for one year bachelor degree in France, it's about uh, two thousand seven hundred uh, euros, but that depends on the universities. So you have to check with the the university if uh, that's the case or not. And uh, as you can see, the French government subsidizes a lot of the cost, the total cost for education. So uh, the, the tuition fees are very low compared to other countries. Um, then for the master degree, uh, it is slightly higher, so 3,700 euros. So um, in ringgit, uh, yeah, it's about 18,200 euro uh, ringgit. Uh, and then for the PhD, uh, the, the tuition fees are quite low. Um, yeah, about 380 euros, so about 1,800 ringgit. Uh, to give you an idea of the, the tuition fees, but that's mainly for the um, for, for the public universities. Uh, why to study in France also? Because it's also a world-class economic power. Uh, it's the world's sixth largest economy with uh, many industries, uh, international corporations, uh, leaders in their fields. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, 31 of the world's uh, 500 largest corporation are, are French. So uh, I can give you a few names like uh, Airbus for aeronautics, uh, Total for energy, uh, Orange for telecommunications, uh, L'Oréal for cosmetics, Veolia for water technologies, and so on. So these are many companies. For example, you can do an internship in one of those companies uh, when you do your study uh, in France. Uh, then why to study in France? Also because of the, the diversity of, of the programs. Um, indeed, we have a diverse selection of programs which are based on more than uh, 3,600 public and private institutions. So we have 73 public universities with uh, professionally oriented degrees or research oriented degrees. We have over 200 engineering schools over 200 business and management schools, uh, and then many uh, 50 schools of arts, uh, 22 schools of architecture, and many schools and institutes that can be uh, public or private and that, that are covering specific fields. And all of these trainings, of course, they have a very strong emphasis on employability, meaning that uh, during your studies, you will have opportunities to, to do an internship or an exchange semester, for example, with Erasmus Plus scholarship, for example. Uh, then why to study in France? Because it's a very popular study destination. Uh, for example, uh, 350,000 international students uh, studied in France last year. Uh, there are about 2.6 million post-secondary students in France in total. 
And France is the first choice among non-English speaking countries after the US and the UK uh, for, the, for the studies. Uh, but of course, we can also mention uh, the arts, the music, the food, uh, the high quality education, uh, the efficient healthcare system, and also the fact that France is also a top tourist destination. So now I will focus on uh, the French higher education system and how it works. So uh, how to apply, so to give you an idea on how to apply to a uh, university in France. Um, so to have access to the French higher education system, uh, so it's upon completion of the baccalaureate or an equivalent of the baccalaureate, which can be, for example, the A-level, or in Malaysia can be the STPM or the International Baccalaureate. And also uh, you need the French language requirements. Uh, if you want to study uh, in French language, for example, in a public university, it will need to be certified by uh, the DELF diploma uh, with the B2 level or the TCF diploma. Uh, so now how, still how to apply. Uh, so if you want to apply for a first year of a bachelor in a public university in France, uh, there is a specific uh, procedure, which is the demande d'admission préalable, DAP, uh, which is to submit to us, MFUC Campus France, uh, before the end of January each year. So here you have the link of this uh, uh, DAP, and for the DAP, uh, you need, uh, because it's to apply to first year of public university in France, bachelor degree, uh, you need to have the, the equivalent of the baccalaureate, the, the STPM, for example, and uh, the B2 level of French uh, certified by the DELF, for example. And then for other institution, uh, you can apply directly straight to the higher education institution. So now, uh, uh, still about the French higher education system. So uh, it's based, it's actually based on the European degree system, which has uh, three steps on the European degree ladder, uh, known as the LMD. So L for licence, bachelor, master, and uh, PhD, the doctorat. Uh, and so to compare both system, so the French system uh, for the bachelor degree is three years, whereas in Malaysia it's four years. Uh, then master degree is two years, and then uh, the PhD, which uh, is at least for three years. So the academic year in France is organized into uh, semesters, and each step represents a number of ECTS credits, uh, which are the European Credit Transfer System. Uh, so to give you an idea, uh, one year, uh, for example, the bachelor degree, licence, is composed of six semesters, so it will give you 180 ECTS credits. So uh, here again is a, a, a diagram of the French higher education system showing you all the different uh, trainings, programs that you can study in France, uh, from uh, medical sciences to science, uh, technical training, uh, grand école, uh, top schools, arts, architecture schools, for example. And here again shows you the diversity of uh, fields that you can study in France, uh, from engineering to art and design, political science, business and management, economics, um, and so on. So uh, now how to find your study program. So um, to find your study program, you can use this tool, which is Campus France uh, online catalog of French higher education, uh, which includes more than 30,000 programs at the bachelor, master and PhD level. So as you can see on the, the right, the screenshot, uh, you can do a selection by the field of study, uh, the academic level, and also by geographic region. So here in yellow, you have the link for the uh, catalog uh, training here. Then, uh, can I study uh, in English? Yes, it's possible. You can find uh, study programs uh, in English. Uh, there's no need to be fluent in French, of course, to study in France. And uh, most of the programs in English are often completed by French classes. 
And there are over uh, 1,400 programs in English that you can apply. Uh, but you have to know that students will generally be required to provide a degree certificate uh, like the IELTS, for example. Um, so here you have the link for this catalog of training in English uh, in yellow. So don't worry about writing everything down. We can share, of course, our presentation after the webinar. So now uh, I will focus on some examples of studies um, in France. So I will start with the, the School of Engineering. Uh, you have to know that engineering science is a, an area of excellence in France's higher education system. Uh, the schools of engineering are selective schools and uh, they focus on uh, fields of specialization. Uh, in France, we have more than 800,000 engineers working in a very different industries that can be uh, civil engineering, uh, IT, aeronautics, agronomics, electronics, transports, and so on. And uh, you also have to know that many uh, French or international companies uh, will recruit uh, engineers from these uh, engineering schools. So uh, if you're interested to uh, study uh, engineering in France, in Malaysia, we have what we call the Foundation Engineering for French Universities, which we call the Pre-France Engineering Programme. Uh, it's a 13-month preparatory program for SPM leavers, uh, which can be done at UNIQL Malaysia France Institutes, MFI. And students during this preparatory program will be exposed to uh, subjects like math, chemistry, physics, French, to be prepared to uh, enroll in French uh, School of Engineering. And after this 13-month uh, program at MFI, students will undergo like a bridging program uh, with uh, French classes. Uh, and so after this bridging program, students will enter the IUT, which we call the University Institutes of Technologies, uh, that lasts two years. Uh, so the agreements uh, were made with five universities, including University of Nice, uh, Toulon, Toulouse, Aix-Marseille, and Saint-Nazaire. So this program is managed by Campus France, uh, and it can be sponsored by MARA and GPA. So here in yellow, you have the link to apply to the Pre-France uh, Engineering Programme. Then again is another programme if you want to study engineering. Uh, it's, also, it's called the Sphere Fast Track Programme. It's also for SPM leavers uh, and it's fully sponsored by JPA. Uh, it leads to the French degree of engineer. Uh, delivered together with a Master of Engineering. So also here you have the link in blue uh, to apply to the, the SPARE Fast Track program if you're interested to study engineering. Um, so then I will focus on business and management schools, uh, but briefly because after that we will have presentation uh, by uh, um, business schools. Uh, so uh, the French School of Management are ranked among the top in the world. Uh, it's actually one of the great strengths of France education system. Uh, some schools of management yeah, are ranked among the top 15 master program, and a lot of them have the triple accreditation more than any countries in Europe. So, which is interesting also with the business and management schools is that it's taught in English from the bachelor to the master. Um, then I will focus on uh, political sciences, but very briefly also because we will have just after a presentation uh, by Sciences Po. Uh, so, but just briefly, uh, Sciences Po is France's leading university for the social sciences and humanity and ranked second in the world in politics and international studies. Um, can be fully bilingual English and French. Um, and so it has seven uh, multicultural campuses, uh, which are based in uh, Paris, uh, Le Havre, Poitiers, Reims, Nancy, uh, Dijon and Menton, um, and offers also bachelor degree, uh, which lasts three years. So uh, here, if you're in Malaysia and you're interested by uh, political sciences, 
Uh, there is a foundation program for uh, Sciences Po Business and Management. Uh, we call it the Pre-France uh, Sciences Po Business and Management. So the same as the, as the engineering program, it's a 13-month preparatory program uh, for SPM leavers at Unicale uh, MFI. And after the 13-month program at MFI, students uh, will do a bridging program uh, in France with uh, intensive French classes. And uh, after the bridging program, students will enter the political uh, sciences institutes or business schools. Uh, so the agreements were made with uh, several um, uh, schools like Sciences Po Menton, uh, Espoir Lille, uh, ESEG, uh, Grenoble École de Management, uh, Schema, and uh, Toulouse Business School. So this program is as well uh, managed by Campus France. Uh, and is also sponsored by Mara and GPA. So here you have also in yellow uh, the link uh, to apply for the foundation program uh, for Sciences Po Business Management. Okay. Uh, then I'll, I'll focus on uh, art studies um, and the campus art um, network. So in France, we have a very strong uh, artistic tradition, uh, which is expressed in public access to art and culture. Uh, in France, we have more than uh, 450,000 people uh, which are working in culture related uh, sectors. Um, so we have this campus art uh, catalog, uh, which is a network of French higher education institutions that offer uh, study programs in arts, fashion, design, music, architecture. And this is also managed by Campus France. And they provide a catalog of more than 600 programs. So you can have the, the link of the catalog here in yellow. Um, and regarding the application timeline to apply for uh, arts uh, program in France, uh, it opened in November every year and the deadline for submission of application is uh, at the end of March. So now I will end this uh, first presentation by uh, two testimonials video from uh, our alumni. So I will start with the first video uh, with the testimonials from uh, Andrea who studied a master in chemical engineering in France. Hi, my name is Andrea. I've been in France for six and a half years and I was doing chemical engineering in Compiègne, France. So after SPM, I was selected for an interview in Petronas. So well, in short, I didn't have the chance to, to choose which country I was, um, I was able to go to. So it was given to me, no regret at all. It's one of my best experiences in my life so far. France, I had the opportunity to be in several cities. I first started off in Tours, um, in the centre of France. So I first learned my baby steps of French language there for a couple of months. After that, we were sent to Colmar, which was the region that I loved the most. I was there for a year. Later on to Toulouse for my diploma studies for two years. And then after that, back to Compiègne, which is in the north of uh, Paris for three years before ending up in Lyon for my final internship. So yeah, it has been a journey and I'm just glad that I've got that, I've got to experience that everything on my own. Working in a French company, it may seem quite daunting at first, being like in, a, in an environment where you, you are the only um, Asian in the company. So I think it's a way where you, you need to learn to adapt to the um, environment, the working environment, working culture. My supervisor was very, very helpful in that. He understood that, you know, I came from a different background and then he, he taught me through everything. And then, so a second video, uh, testimonials from uh, Tanusha, who is an alumni who studied the Master in Process Engineering.
my name is Tanisha and I recently graduated uh, from INP Toulouse with master's degree in process engineering. I wanted to do engineering. At that time, it was chemical engineering. After my SPM, I applied a uh, JPA scholarship. So for engineering, we had uh, four choices. Uh, it was uh, France, Germany, um, Korean, Japan. And since I wanted to do chemical engineering, I thought France would be the best choice. It was the first time I'm going overseas, far, far, totally far away. But when I went there, they have already a family to welcome me. So I stayed with them for, I think, for three, four months. And it was like a complete family with two sisters, elder sisters. Uh, they introduced to me to their family members. I know their relatives, I think their grandparents and everyone. So they even brought me to Andorra, to different cities. We went for picnic. Uh, they, uh, they even invited my parents for dinner. Life outside university is uh, I started traveling with friends. I started to be independent. I started to know how to budget. Since my passion was for dancing as well, so, but I learned a new form of dances in France. Yes, modern jazz and swing. And the uh, teacher really liked my performance, so she asked uh, us to perform in on stages. Okay, so uh, now here on this slide, uh, here, are, here are a few uh, useful, useful links, uh, for example, for short and summer programs, uh, for programs taught in English, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for bachelor or master degrees. Um, so here you can uh, uh, see these uh, links. And then uh, if you have any questions regarding study in France in general, you can contact us uh, through info at mfuc.org on, on or on our website, um, mfuc.org. Uh, we also on social media, Facebook, Instagram, so feel free to, to follow us. Um, yes, so thank you very much for attending my presentation. Uh, so yeah, don't hesitate to type your question on um, on the text box. And uh, now we will proceed to our second presentation uh, by ESEC uh, School of Management by Mr. Mark Porto. So, uh, so thank you, Ellen. I'm going to share my my screen for the presentation. Is it okay? Yes. So just a second. Okay, I can. I think that you can. You can see my screen. Is that okay? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We can hear you. Yeah. And you can see my screen as well. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you, Alain, for giving me giving me this opportunity to. Uh, um, talk about TSX. So uh, thank you also for this uh, very complete presentation. So as you said, my name is, uh, is Mr. Porter and I am the, the head of ESEG office in Shanghai. So for my part, I will be uh, introducing ESEG School of Management and uh, its uh, undergraduate programs. So uh, first of all, so ESEG is, uh, is a school of, uh, of management and uh, it's a triple crown grande école. So we are accredited by both AQUIS, ACSB and, and AMBA. So AQUIS is from Europe, ACSB is, is from the US and AMBA is for the, the MBA. Um, there are less than 1% of the education institutions in the, in the world that are actually triple crown like us. 
and uh, our programs are also uh, recognized um, by the Conférence des Grandes Écoles and by the French Ministry of Education. So this is very important uh, when it comes to recognition of the diplomas. So in France, actually, there are about uh, 200 business schools. 32 are Grand École and only about 14 are Triple Crown like us. So we are a private, non-profit business school, and we are part of the largest private comprehensive uh, university in Lille, which is the Lille Catholic University. So this makes us being different actually from other business schools in France that have been, uh, most of them uh, created by the Chamber of Commerce of the region. The advantage uh, is that you will have an uh, opportunity to share all the university size facilities in our Lille campus, for example, that have more than 30,000 students that are studying uh, not only business, but also law, medicine, and uh, even uh, engineering. You can uh, find us on several rankings, such as Financial Times, QS World Ranking, Shanghai Ranking, and also in the French rankings. So we are ranked uh, number six within French business schools for our master in management in the last financial time ranking, for example. So rankings uh, are important, but uh, even more important, uh, I think, for you is, is to find a school that offers uh, the major that you're looking for, uh, that got also the location that fits you the best. Well, you need to be happy during your, your study time. And uh, also that has a, a large company network, so it can offer you high placement opportunities where you can be in a real international environment because when you go to study abroad, you do not want to be surrounded uh, by students from only one country, do you? So we are one school with two campuses. All our programs for all our students, both local in, and international, are taught 100% in English. So you will have the opportunity also to learn French, and it's for free, over the business classes. We have about 6,000 students uh, this September, with uh, half of the students, 3,000 in, in our Lille campus uh, and 3,000 in our Paris campus. So we are a highly international school, uh, and you can see it from our students, uh, our professors, and also our partners. So for example, we have students coming from more than 100 countries. So 80% of our permanent faculty is non-French and we have uh, about 300 uh, partner universities in 70 plus countries in the world. Uh, we mainly do uh, exchange with them. So we do student exchange, double degrees, uh, visiting professor programs and also uh, joint research with those partners you uh, can see also that uh, research is also a very strong point in our school since we have a joint laboratory with the french cnrs uh, and we are ranked number two in france for research in management just after uh, hec we have a very strong company network and all our students every year they need to do compulsory internship so this is just one example uh, about um, our focus, I would say, on uh, practical experience and learning by doing approach. So here you have some examples of the companies that are collaborating with us, either by welcoming our students for internship, participating to our job fairs, both online or on site, sending us professionals to give lectures and presentations, uh, sharing about their job, their sector, their company, their career, mentoring our students as well, um, organizing with us uh, case studies and uh, team competitions, etc. So we are one school with two campuses and you can see uh, both Lille and Paris locations here. Um, our under, undergraduate programs are offered uh, both in our Lille and also in our Paris campus. When it comes to Lille, so Lille is a northern city just uh, one hour away by express train from Paris. It's a European hub, uh, quite near to London, about one hour, 30 minutes by train, Brussels, about 30 minutes, Amsterdam, about two hours as well. So Lille was the European capital of culture in uh, 2004, and it is the world design capital in 2020. It's the um, fourth largest 
uh, city in France with about 1.2 million inhabitants. Uh, it's a city that is uh, very young. Uh, and another very unique thing in Lille, it's the fact that uh, three of the top 10 uh, business schools in France have also campus there. So you have, uh, of course, ESA, but you have also uh, Schema and, uh, and EDEC. And uh, last but not least, some Fortune 500 companies on the retail sector specifically, such as Auchan, Leroy Merlin, and Decathlon, that you probably know, have their world uh, headquarters in the region. So our historical campus is in Lille, and it was established in uh, 1964. We are uh, investing to renovate and to extend our Lille campus with a sustainable and uh, village approach. So everything will be uh, completed in 2021. Here, uh, here is a map uh, showing where is our campus in Lille, uh, next to the Lille Catholic University. Actually, we are near next to Parc Vauban, Parc de la Citadelle, which is the, the largest park uh, in Lille, and it's uh, only about 20 to 25 minutes by walk from the two main uh, train stations, uh, Lille Europe and, uh, and uh, Lille Flandre. Then uh, Paris, so everybody knows Paris, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre Museum, Notre Dame Cathedral, Versailles Castle, Champs Elysees, Roland Garros, Paris Saint Germain. So Paris has been elected several times uh, in a row as the best destination for abroad studies by international students in, in QS. Uh, Paris will host the Summer Olympic Games in 2024. It is a vibrant city that combines uh, the French art de vivre with the best international facilities, standards, and uh, connections. Perhaps you have been to Paris already in the past. So our campus is located in the largest CBD in continental Europe. Europe. That's to say uh, Paris La Défense District. This is the, I would say, the white color district. And you have more than 1,500 companies uh, that have either their world or European headquarter uh, located there. So you probably know that following the Brexit also, the European Baking Authority will, will move from London to Paris. So Paris will also uh, be stronger on the financial uh, system worldwide. So our campus is uh, located in the Grand Arche de la Défense, uh, just on the, on the B1. Uh, and, we, um, and la Grand Arche is the most iconic building of the district. Um, and since 2017, we have a new building just located about 200 meters away from the Grand Arche. So you can see in the, in the pictures uh, both the Grand Arche and also our, our new building with our logo on it. So when it comes to the programs that are offered for students uh, graduating from high school, uh, that is to say for undergraduate programs, so we are offering two programs at undergraduate levels. We have a three-year bachelor in international business and a five years combined uh, three years bachelor cycle and plus two years master cycle. So those are two different paths. So our three years bachelor in international business is welcoming about 60 students uh, totally in both Lille and Paris campus this year. This is a very practical program and the goal when choosing this program is to start uh, working just after graduation. So it is a program that combines, uh, of course, solid uh, academic foundations with the opportunity to put them into practice every year through a compulsory internship. So uh, having hands on, the, of, on experience, of course, is uh, very important in our school. So here you have the breakdown uh, information about the three year studies. On the fifth semester, that is to say uh, the first semester of the third year, you will have also the opportunity to do uh, an exchange in one of our partner universities. And we are also developing uh, recently uh, some uh, double degrees with uh, foreign institutions. What can you do after our three year bachelor in international business? Then you have a lot of options. Uh, so we keep many options. So you can, for example, start to work and after uh, gaining three years working experience, uh, you can have the possibility to join an MBA. 
uh, you can uh, go for a master uh, either in our school or in another education institution. So in our school, you can see that we offer 10 different uh, one year, three terms, uh, master of sciences. So uh, another possibility as well could be uh, to join uh, our Grand École program. Um, of course, uh, all those options are not automatic and you, you need to apply uh, like an outside student. And last, last but not least, uh, but this has been uh, mentioned already by Ms. Hélène, uh, we are welcoming students uh, from Malaysia uh, from Unique Pré France program for the past two years. So we are also offering the five years combination of three years bachelor cycle and two years master cycle in order to get a master in management. <coughs> this is our flagship program and we are running since the opening of our school. We are ranked uh, number one in France actually for this five years program. The bachelor cycle provides students with uh, general management knowledge. Internships are compulsory every year and students have the opportunity to spend at least one semester abroad in one of our partner universities, uh, maximum four semesters within the five years program time frame. When it comes to the master cycle, you can see that you will specialize yourself and uh, we have uh, nine different specializations that are available. So also students, they can do their master in apprenticeship, apprenticeship that is to say uh, alternating work in a company that would be welcoming them and of course classes in our school. Uh, if you have an uh, entrepreneurial project, we have also an incubator. And regarding this program, so starting this year, actually our grand uh, ECHO program uh, has been redesigned and uh, I could, I could uh, send you uh, some update information about end of this month if you want to. So going to school and studying is important, but uh, also uh, having the opportunity to uh, continue your experience outside of the classroom by joining uh, one of our clubs uh, should be also something uh, uh, appealing for you. So if you like music, sport, or being involved in CSR or community activities, you will find uh, students that share the same passion and interests. And we have about uh, 50 clubs at ESEG. When it comes to uh, applications, so our applications for September 2021 shall be open by beginning of October. So how to apply for our three years BIB, it is quite easy. You need to do the online application and provide requir required documents, including English test score. But uh, if you have been studying in English, uh, your test score uh, could be also waived. And we have uh, every year uh, several rounds of admission with deadlines and uh, release dates. So last year we got about uh, six deadlines, six admission rounds. Regarding uh, application for our Grand École program, it's quite similar. And uh, the main difference is about um, providing three letters of recommendation from either your professor or counselor. We do offer scholarships that are a rebate on the tuition fee amount based on the evaluation of the application package. And we take a holistic point of view. So everything is taken into consideration. I will go quick on that uh, because Mrs. Ellen already mentioned the cost of life in France. Just uh, uh, if you want to plan your, your future budget, more of our tuition fees, here are some useful information for your reference. So of course, this can vary depending on your consumer habits and standards. So this is for Lille and now this is for Paris. So if you want also to have insight uh, from students, you can contact our ambassadors through our website. And finally, choosing uh, YESEG, it is also choosing a culture and share values. So let's have a one minute uh, video about our school to uh, finish with my today presentation. There is nothing so stable as change. It's behind every one of us, in every act, every thought, every breath, and every achievement. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change, to know where to go, what paths to take, to become responsible and to understand everything that this implies. 
Because one change always leaves the way open for the establishment of others. And more changes, and more changes. We are all part of these changes together. A sense of compassionate collectiveness that will lead us towards a better world, creating a boundless drive that we will be able to share. And spread. Education is the most powerful tool which you can use to change the world. More than mere engagement, it's a promise to learn, to create, to discover, and to understand how to make new choices. So, as Kelly said, let's be the change we wish to see in the world. So uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention during uh, this presentation. Then here you can find uh, our Shanghai office contact information, both my contact information and, and my team member information as well. So thank you. Thank you very much, Marco, for this very interesting presentation on the ESX School of Management. So now I will leave the floor to uh, Ms. Mariana Lozada for a presentation on Sciences Po. Thank you so much. Thanks, Hélène, for the invitation. Thanks to the organizer. Um, let me share this, my screen with you. Just a second. Okay, uh, can you see it properly? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, so, well, Elena already mentioned a lot about France, living in France, studying in France, and you have the opportunity to hear from Mark about what's like to be in a, a business school. So he also mentioned that, it's, um, you know, there is not the perfect school, and rankings are important, but that's not the only thing. So I'm going to talk about Sciences Po, which is also a very specific school, because Sciences Po is a school in the social sciences. So I don't know if you heard about Sciences Po before. Uh, you have some facts and figures. It's a well-established school because it's almost 150 years. Uh, we have about 40, 000, uh, 14,000 students. It's very well known, as Helen mentioned, uh, for politics and international studies. Uh, we have different type of programs, one bachelor degree, which is three years. And then we have different master programs, which are two years or one year master programs for students who have professional experience, PhDs, dual degrees, uh, summer school, and so on. Uh, Sciences Po is well known because it's very international. Um, almost 50% of our students come from abroad and we have over 150 nationalities. Um, and other very important thing about Sciences Po is that um, our students are not only very international, but they receive an international education because they spend one year abroad and that's mandatory. We have 478 partner universities all around the world. So I'll tell you more about our undergraduate programs. Uh, so as I said, Sciences Po is a social science university. Uh, that means that we have an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary curriculum in which you will be able to study the social sciences. Um, and the ones that we offer are economic, humanities, history, law, political science, and sociology. So your program will be interdisciplinary. We do offer majors. So we have three majors, but those majors are uh, still interdisciplinary. So the majors that we have are economy and society, if you're more interested in sociology and economics, political humanities, if you're interested in the humanities and political science um, and politics and government, if you're more interested in um, political science, international relations, and you are willing to work probably in the public sector. Um, so you have an overview. I don't know if you can see it properly uh, on the screen, but you can see how our curriculum is organized. So the bachelor degree is three years. Um, after you finish a high school um, in which you will have to choose one of those majors and you also have 
a civic engagement program. The first two years take place in France, and the third year is mandatory abroad in one of our partner universities. So the idea of Sciences Po is really to educate change makers, uh, people who are very concerned about the world they live in and they want to bring a change. Uh, to, they want to understand how the society works. And um, in order to do so, they need to have a good comprehension of all the disciplines in the so social sciences, because if they don't, they cannot only understand one problem from one perspective. It's like today we're facing this, uh, this pandemic. And if we only look at it from, uh, like from the health point of view, it's very hard to understand how it works. We need to be able to understand how this pandemic is affecting the society as a whole and not just from a health point of view. We need to understand how it's impacting economic, uh, uh, the, the economy, the society, uh, how our governments are working together to fight this pandemic and so on. So this is basically what you will learn in Sciences Po, uh, whatever pro, pro issue or, or, or global problem you want to tackle, you have to do it from, a, in, from an interdisciplinary perspective. Um, so Sciences Po is our curriculum, our academics. It's also a civic engagement. Uh, this is very important and it's really part of the curriculum because we want students that are really well trained um, regarding the academics, the, the courses that they will follow, but they also need to be exposed to the field. Uh, so, besides the classes that they will have at Sciences Po, uh, they will have to engage in a project and they will receive guidance to engage on that project. And uh, at the end of this uh, civic engagement project, they have to submit a capstone. Uh, so, we have the academics, we have the civic engagement program, and we have the international exposure. Uh, so I mentioned that Sciences Po bachelor degree is two years in France and one year mandatory abroad. So when the students go abroad, they can choose among one of Sciences Po 478 partner universities. Uh, we have partners all over the world with um, top universities uh, that are offering um, programs in the social sciences too. Uh, you have on the slide a few of our partners like University of Berkeley, Bocconi, Cambridge, Columbia, Sydney, uh, NUS, University of Hong Kong, and, and so on. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more, you can go to our website and, and, and check uh, our international affairs uh, web page in which you will find all our partners. Um, we also have uh, dual degrees. Uh, so these dual degrees are crafted together with the, some of our best partners. We have nine. And instead of being three years, these are four years. So the first two years happen at Sciences Po, where you get the fundamentals in the social sciences. And the third and the fourth year will take place at the partner university. So those are the schools which we uh, offer dual degrees, Columbia University in the, the, the States uh, and Berkeley. Uh, also one in the East Coast, one other in the West Coast. We have uh, Freie Universität in Berlin, KO University in Tokyo, NUS in Singapore, uh, UBC in Canada, uh, UCL in London, uh, Hong Kong University in Hong Kong and the University of Sydney in Australia. Uh, I will tell you a little bit more about admissions. Uh, the admissions of these dual degrees are done jointly by Sciences Po and the partner university. So it's a different admissions procedure that Sciences Po's single degree, uh, which I will speak about later. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned, um, I think Helen said that Sciences Po, uh, you have to be flu uh, fully fluent in French or in English, and actually it's not the case. When you graduate, you become fluent in both languages, but you don't need to speak French to apply to Sciences Po because we have programs that are fully taught in English, and those are in a specific campuses. So 
We do have seven multicultural campuses in France. Uh, some campuses require the candidates to be bilingual, but there are three campuses which are fully English speaking. So I will focus on those campuses. Um, if you want to have more information about the other campuses, um, you can ask questions later or you can always visit our website in which you have all that information. Uh, so the three campuses that are fully English speaking are um, our campus in Le Havre, which is in Normandy. I think you can see it here on, on the, the map. Um, so it's our Europe Asia program is really focused on the relationship between Europe and Asia. Um, all our campuses are have a regional focus. Uh, our programs are fully taught in English and you will learn French, but you don't have to be from Asia to apply to the campus. You have to be interested in Asia. That's the most important part, no matter where you come from. Um, so on that campus, you will receive exactly the same program that you will receive in any of the other Sciences Po campuses. The difference is that the electives, the languages, the campus population um, will be more related to Asia uh, compared to the other campuses. Uh, you will also have the opportunity to do one of the dual degrees on that campus if you wish to do so. And it's a relatively small campus with less than 500 students. The second English speaking campus is our Monton campus, which is focused on the relationship between Europe and the Middle East and the Mediterranean. So again, as the campus in Le Havre is, uh, you don't have to be from that region. You just need to be interested and you will learn more about uh, the Middle East and the Mediterranean, you will be able to learn the languages. And it's also, it's a smaller campus with 387 students. And finally, our third English speaking campus is the campus in Hans, which is the Europe North America program. Uh, again, you will focus on North America. The languages that you, that will be offered are Arabic, Italian, German, and Spanish. And is our largest campus with uh, with 1,384 students and is also eligible for the dual degree. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the undergraduate admissions. Uh, so it's a two-phase process. The first process is an online application. Uh, every year our applications open in October like this egg and they close uh, in by the end of April or early May. And it's a rolling admission system, meaning that the earlier you apply, the earlier you will get the response. Uh, so you apply, uh, submitting the required documents, and if your application is considered admissible, you will be invited for an interview. Uh, so usually the interviews take place in your home country because we have uh, Sciences Po admission staff that go to different places to interview the candidates. Um, we had to change that uh, with COVID and probably during this year admissions, in, admissions interview will be conducted online. So the, the documents that you have to submit, uh, of course your um, high school diploma and the results. Uh, transcript for the three years of secondary school and uh, different personal statements and essays. So uh, you have to talk about your personal background, your activities, hobbies. Uh, what's very, very important is your motivation statement. Basically, you need to be able to explain what you, why you choose Sciences Po and what can you bring to Sciences Po. So um, it's almost like a job interview. You know, you really need to apply if you think that Sciences Po is the right school for you because you have a specific project and you have to be able to explain in your state motivation statement, uh, you know, what's your story, your personality, what would you be able to bring to the school, to the classroom, your hobbies and, and so on. That's extremely important because uh, apart from uh, the grades or your diplomas, which is 
you know, important for the, for the admissions process because it's a holistic admission process, the motivation statement will make the difference. Um, so, as I said, it's a holistic review. And then the admissions interview is a 30 minute interview in which you have to uh, introduce yourself and talk about uh, a photo or a picture that will be given to you. Uh, so after the second phase, which is the interview, you will, you will have a reply, let's say about four to five weeks after you pass the interview. In terms of tuition fees, uh, we have um, a flat tuition fees for students who don't pay taxes within the EU, uh, which is 10,700 per academic year. But we also offer uh, a lot of scholarships. Uh, actually, once 33% of our Sciences Po students uh, receive in scholarships, and those scholarships are based both on merit and financial need. Ellen mentioned the, the program with uh, Mara and GPO, and it's open to, to candidates uh, for Sciences Po. Um, okay, so I talk about scholarships already. We have a website in which you will find all the information about the scholarships. Um, you have our Sciences Po scholarship that co can cover up to 70% of, of the tuition fees, but there, there are also uh, scholarship from uh, the French government. And of course, um, the high, higher education in France is, is highly subsidized. So you get a lot of benefits of being a student in France. Um, just to give you an overview of Sciences Po, we, we organize a lot of events. We have a lot of student societies. These are some of our uh, conference speakers that we had recently. Um, leaders from uh, international organizations, from the corporate world, um, like uh, the CEO of Google or uh, head of states like uh, Justin Trudeau for, uh, from Canada or Justin Darden, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. So every year you have the possibility of attending um, high level conferences with uh, great speakers and benefit from, um, you know, this intellectual exchange uh, at Sciences Po. Uh, a lot of activities too. Uh, you are, will be able to, to participate in sports, associations, festivals, uh, and arts, music. So um, it's a very lively and vibrant student life with a, a very large variety of activities. We also have a very large network of alumni. As I mentioned before, Sciences Po is almost 150 years uh, old. So we train uh, many of the French presidents and prime ministers, uh, head of state of government from other countries as well, um, head of international organizations, uh, leaders of the business, uh, corporate world, and also uh, the academia, uh, the arts uh, and so on. So you have some examples uh, there. Um, just to give you an overview of what you can do about Sciences Po if you would like to pursue um, your studies or in case you would like to consider Sciences Po after your bachelor degree, we have uh, seven graduate schools uh, that are also in the social sciences, so the School of Management and Innovation, the School of Public Affairs, uh, the Doctoral School, if you want to do a PhD, the Law School, the School of Journalism, the Urban School, and the Paris School of International Affairs. So each of those schools offer a very large variety of master degrees that could be from uh, international security, uh, energy management, uh, human rights, uh, public affairs, um, innovation and, 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 uh, and design. Uh, so um, if you would like to consider uh, studying at Sciences Po later in, in your life, um, you can check our website too, in which you will find a lot of information about all the programs that we offer. Uh, 
uh, including a lot of dual master programs with top universities around the world. Uh, we also offer a lot of services, uh, but I think I will skip that. Uh, we can, of course, help you to settle in France while you, once you are admitted. So in terms of housing, uh, residence permit, financial aid, so on and so forth. Um, just to finish, um, if you are considering spending at Sciences Po, but if you still have time because you're entering higher education uh, the following year, we have a summer school that will allow you to try Sciences Po and to take a few classes. So we have two types of summer schools. One is the pre-college program that is uh, for high school students. Uh, we have two sessions that take place in July every year, and then we have the university program that is for students who are already in higher education. Uh, so you have an overview there. Again, we have a dedicated website. I know that we don't have a lot of time today. Uh, so uh, you can check uh, the summer school website in which you will find the classes that you uh, might be able to take uh, and also some videos so you can learn more about the experience of being a summer school uh, student. Uh, in case you want to have information, uh, please feel free to contact me. You have my contact details there. I'm based in Singapore. And uh, if you uh, go to that QR, if you scan that QR code, you will get access to our brochure in which you have really all the information. So don't hesitate to uh, check out the brochure and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you so much for your attention. And uh, well, I hope you enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you very much, Mariana, for this uh, very interesting presentation on Sciences Po. Uh, so now we'll leave the floor to um, Dr. Arnaud Duquesne from uh, Inflexion uh, Lyon. Bonjour. Bonjour à, à tout le monde. Hello, everybody. My name is Arnaud Duquesne. I'm the um, founder and owner of uh, French Language School. So we are now in something uh, completely uh, different because uh, we are here to help you to uh, find your academic studies after maybe learning French and then feel confident in uh, living uh, in France. I will um, uh, show you a brief uh, presentation of the school. I apologize for my um, wonderful, uh, lovely uh, French yeah. accent uh, in English because I teach French, not English. But uh, please uh, be reassured that uh, all my team can uh, speak very fluent uh, English. So let's start. So, um, as you can see, inflection is located in Lyon. I will uh, come back to this uh, later because it's very important um, to uh, uh, the location or where you study. And uh, what you can see here is not uh, important cities, but it's a map world, world map with where our students are coming from. So they come from uh, everywhere, all over the world, in order to uh, study uh, French. So um, let's go about uh, uh, our um, identity. We are a human size uh, school. Um, the school was uh, founded in uh, 2006, so it's um, now uh, uh, in one year it will be our um, 15th um, anniversary. But even if we are a human size a school with a lot of um, communication and service for the student, uh, we are a very uh, valuable uh, academic uh, teaching. Uh, for example, we have the label Qualité Flu, it's only for uh, teaching French, but we have the 
the max, uh, 15 stars on uh, 15th. And uh, we've got um, like uh, other school, uh, Sciences Po and YSEG, uh, we've got the label Bienvenue en France with uh, two stars and three. And uh, we are very uh, proud of this label because we are for the moment um, the uh, only uh, French language school in France to obtain uh, these rewards. So this label means we know and we take care of our students very well. That's why we are uh, something like a preschool in order for you once again to feel confident in France, then choose your own studies more freely. And uh, of course, we are a um, Campus France member. We can do this because um, our identity is a little special. We are a high, um, higher education institute, like a university, and it's not common in French language uh, center. That is why there is absolutely no difficulty uh, for us uh, to obtain a visa to study only French uh, in France even for one year or more. We are, of course, uh, on the website of uh, Etudes en France, and you can follow uh, all the uh, Campus France uh, procedure with uh, our school. But you can start whenever you want. We don't follow um, ah, uh, um, Parcoursup. We don't follow Parcoursup. You can start whenever you want. So it's good to start maybe six months or one year before the study you want to have time to really set up your project. And we are also an examination center for TCF, TRF, and DELF and DALF. Uh, that is very important uh, for two reasons, because uh, DELF and DALF are diploma. And uh, this is because we are higher education institute that we can give the only diploma in a French language um, capacity. And uh, what that means, that means that all our teachers are very uh, qualified. They are all a master too uh, for teaching French to foreign people, but they can also uh, examine every uh, exam we have. They have the accreditation for, and so, um, it's not so common to have teacher who can teach and examine, and that's why our lesson will always uh, prepare you uh, to succeed uh, in this kind of exam. Very important for you uh, if you want to enter university or higher school in France, because generally you need a B1 or B2 or even C1 level to enter uh, this kind of uh, other school. And uh, we are also a foreign language kisses for uh, French people um, because we like to make people meet. So when you will uh, come to the school, you will, uh, of course, uh, have a campus life uh, with us and uh, you will uh, uh, encounter, find a French student, uh, open-minded, who uh, will be uh, very um, uh, interesting in helping you in your everyday life, in talking, uh, with you because they are uh, the same as you. They are learning a foreign language to study in another country. And so uh, this is uh, uh, two most important uh, labels for us, the label uh, Bienvenue en France and uh, the label uh, Qualité Fleu, only for uh, all kind of uh, work. And as you can see, uh, three stars for uh, teaching, three stars for uh, having good teachers, uh, three stars for welcoming students, three, star, three stars, sorry for my English, really sorry, uh, for the quality of the campus, and three stars for the quality of the relationship and so on. Of course, you need to understand, you need to know, sorry, you need to know, sorry, you need to know uh, Lyon, the city of Lyon, this is the second city uh, of France. Uh, this is uh, uh, a city that is uh, around uh, 4,000 years old and uh, so you will have uh, a very interesting uh, place because Lyon is also a human-sized city. Nothing is far. You can do anything by foot or um, 
or bicycle and by uh, public transportation, very efficient uh, in Lyon. It's a very safe city, it's important uh, to say that. And it's a um, city you can travel from everywhere in Europe uh, very easily and it's only two hours from Paris. And it's so much cheaper than uh, Paris. So it's good to uh, stay in Lyon, go to Paris uh, by train the weekend, for example, spare money for seven months, then after go live wherever you want uh, in uh, Paris, in Paris or uh, in France. And uh, of course, uh, you can go by your airport, but uh, it's also a world capital of gastronomy, as you may already uh, know. And um, it's uh, history with modernity. Why modernity? Because it's the second uh, uh, student cities uh, in France. It was uh, rated for the best place to study by uh, the book, um, the magazine uh, L'Etudiant in 2018. And um, this is a very economic and cultural and um, uh, dynamic place. That's why it's very uh, strange and very special and not so common to be human size, a lot of history, that the second Renaissance uh, place after uh, Venice uh, in the world, and still what few of the best uh, university and um, higher education, like uh, Normal Sup, like uh, Université um, uh, Jean Moulin uh, One, uh, like uh, EM Lyon, uh, for example, for business school, and uh, so on, so on, so on. So, uh, we like to say that uh, all city, Lyon, and all school uh, share common value. And the first one is to be a human size, but with great expectation, great quality, and um, great possibilities. So we offer, we offer class from uh, one week to uh, one year. We don't uh, work, and uh, of course, uh, it's normal like uh, uh, higher education school because you can enter whenever you want and you can stay regarding your visa how long uh, 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 you need. Uh, we uh, will um, prepare you for uh, examination, for uh, studying at the uh, university and um, uh, we are open all the year. We are open all the year um, and uh, so uh, we are very uh, welcoming. Uh, kind of school, and of course, we provide online courses, of course. So, uh, some kind of, some pictures uh, of uh, teachers. I'm sorry for um, um, what uh, you can see. I'm not so good in PowerPoint, too, because I know all teachers, and as a teacher, I'm not, uh, I'm not very fond uh, of uh, PowerPoint. Um, what you have to, uh, to understand is you don't need to buy uh, any course material. We provide uh, you with uh, everything because we are not following uh, any special book. We use several books because the teacher is not someone here to read a book for uh, a student. So we have people from all over the world. We welcome around uh, 500 students each year uh, because we decide uh, not to grow up and we decide to limit uh, uh, the number of a student around 100 students every month at average. We don't go more than this. So we like to keep quality with uh, not too much student. If we, have, if we welcome too much student, we will lose the quality of our school. So we can take care of you. This is some uh, pictures of a uh, classroom. And uh, as you can see is of course with uh, the crisis of uh, COVID on the third uh, picture, you can see how we evolved and managed to uh, offer you a very safe place to study with all um, uh, measures you can uh, wait for this kind of uh, pandemia. And it's important to uh, talk uh, about that. So the first uh, should be uh, what we'll do in examination and the third what we'll do in uh, classroom. 
And of course, what is very important is uh, your accommodation. We provide uh, accommodation, we help you to find uh, accommodation. And uh, from, uh, uh, in fact, we help, you, we help you with anything you need to come in France. And it's starting with how to uh, ask for a visa, for example, we will help you. Um, and uh, we're working as a team because, uh, of course, we know uh, Erwina and Helen uh, since long time, so they have good communication uh, with everyone. So uh, we are here to, to help and we can help. So with the visa, with any question you have, and of course with accommodation. So we have very cheap accommodation, first because it's Lyon and not Paris, and second because we are working with university dormitory as a university. So you can have a room starting from, as you can see, uh, 200 euro uh, by a month. But we have also private residence, uh, of course, more expensive, but with more comfort, us families, and uh, of course, we can answer any demand uh, you need. We adapt, we adapt to our students uh, because our students are our uh, clients. And this is how we live, um, how we manage uh, to um, uh, the last crisis we have. We make, uh, of course, uh, online. Uh, online lesson, uh, we have a good reputation and um, uh, our team is really a great team. So in uh, two days, everything was uh, come back to uh, uh, normal and we take time in crisis to innovate and we are able to reopen uh, um, the, at the mid-May. So we reopened the school very, very soon. So the school had been reopened since mid-May with no interruption and um, it's still working and it's good to know. What was very interesting for us in this time is when we uh, used to um, uh, make uh, this online lesson, former students all over the world who are now come back to uh, a few years ago to their country, come back to, come back to school, to all school by online lessons. So we are very um, proud of our alumni, alumni uh, network. And uh, to uh, finish, uh, you will have all the information you need to contact us. I will show you a little uh, uh, video of uh, several students talking about the school and um, about Lyon. Of course, everybody is happy to be at the school. <laughs> that, that's the game. But um, uh, remember that um, uh, they were not, uh, we, we didn't ask, uh, it's only on a voluntaria. And so they were very happy and they liked Lyon. So please wait a second. Up, up. Uh, pa, pa, pa. Évidemment, je ne l'ai pas. Ah si. Hop. Hop. Juan José Ramírez. Kim Lamho. Je m'appelle Mara Boyu. Camilo Silva. Oyuzi. Juan José Oya. Je m'appelle Anton, je suis Amon. Je viens de en Chine. Colombie. Je m'appelle Mingwei, je suis Malaisien. Je suis Marcus. Je viens de Kazakhstan. Et je suis Coréen. Et je suis venu du Brésil. Oh, je viens de Corée. À Lyon, j'ai la gastronomie. Lyon, c'est une ville très belle. Il y a beaucoup de restaurants qui sont très bons. C'est une ville super multiculturelle. Son transport est et les musées aussi. Le paysage aussi, c'est... Euh, J'aime Lyon. J'aime Lyon. J'ai connu une flexion pour une agence en Colombie. J'ai trouvé une flexion sur l'internet. En flexion, c'est un bon écho. Un écho incroyable. C'est différent. Rencontrer avec Occidental et Oriental. J'ai pu faire une immersion sur la, la culture française. Il y a beaucoup de personnes très gentilles. Et la méthode, c'est super dynamique. J'ai appris beaucoup de choses ici. Oui, c'est pour ça que j'aime beaucoup ici. Je me dis que c'est la meilleure école. Tout c'est parfait. J'aime Lyon et j'aime toute flexion. Tout c'est parfait. Thank you so much for your time and sorry for my uh, English. Thank you very much, uh, Arnaud, for this uh, very complete presentation on uh, inflexion and uh, Lyon. Um, so now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Mosley Yeo for the presentation on life and study in France. Hi everyone, my name is Mosley. I'm just going to pop up my presentation and quickly let you have a look at what I have to share with you. 
Now, can you guys see my slides? Okay. Okay, can you guys also hear me, right? Good. Yes. So my name is Mosley. Uh, actually, I'm a graduate from France as well. So I'll just briefly go through my education background and my journey on uh, before I went to France. So actually, I was a graduate in Malaysia. I actually did my diploma in Tara University College. And after that, I went to Ireland to did my degree. And after Ireland, I decided to take the leap and go to France for to learn the language and also to to pursue my master's degree. So what really kicked my interest or what really influenced me to go to France is the people that I met in Ireland actually. Because of the French people that I have met in Ireland, they are very, very friendly. They invite me to the parties. They even teach me how to bake cake like you see in the photos. And they're just a bunch of very, very friendly people. They even invite me to travel in France with them. And like you see here, my friends actually invite me and my friends over and then they actually travel around with me. So they drove from Chambéry all the way down to Nice, which is a very, very long drive. But then they still did it anyway. So they just, uh, so they came all the way down just to enjoy the trip with us. And after that, they also uh, invite me to have a dinner and also to stay with the family to live to literally let me immerse into their family culture, which I think it is extremely, extremely uh, insightful and very, very grateful for what they have done for me because this experience is actually uh, once in a lifetime, I would suppose. So after, intro, after, after they have introduced me to the very wonderful uh, French uh, the country and also, also they also introduced me about the ed educations. So I decided that after my degree, I have to at least live in France for some moment. So then that's where I, the interest of going to France kicked in. So, so then I took the first step in going to La Rochelle. So I learned my French in the La Rochelle town. So it is a small town. It is a port town in the west of west coast of France. So it is very very beautiful. As you can see in the evening, it is exactly like how it is pictured. So it's a, you can see a very very historical building architecture, and also you can see the sunset and stuff. So the, to me, I think it is a very very amazing place uh, to learn the language. And I think what I've learned is that. Um, I spent a year to learn the language there uh, for one year because I know that if I want to stay in France or for my education or even for a job, I need to have the language proficiency. So I decided to take a year gap and to just to learn French with the, the with University de la Rochelle. So I was the only Malaysian there, with <laughs> surprise. Uh, it was a bit shocking to me to be the only Malaysians in a classroom, but uh, I think it is also very, very uh, beneficial for me to actually learn to uh, be independent and also be um, being different is actually nothing to be ashamed of. And uh, it is also something to be, in this side, it is also something that it should be celebrated to be different from uh, everyone else. So there I actually, I really speak French because uh, if you want to learn the language, from my experience, I think that going to the place where they only speak that languages, that language helps you to learn that language so much more faster. And also, I also got the opportunity to visit around the La Rochelle region. And here you can see the photos of me and my classmates. Uh, you can see a few Asian faces, but there are some of them from China, uh, Korea. There are some of them from Brazil, Australia, from, um, uh, from Mexico. Sorry, from Mexico. And they are all different people from different places, but only one Malaysian. But that is okay. So anyway, I get to also learn to be independent. I get to also travel around. You can see uh, the machine, the, the elephant machine. <laughs> when you travel around, when you go to North, you see a lot of different uh, kind of hidden gems that you will find. After La Rochelle, and also they also introduced me to the, one of the fun facts. If you ask a French person, what is this? They will, and you tell them it is a croissant, they will all unite <laughs> to correct you in the accent because they will say it is a croissant. But if you ask them, what is this? They will, you will have a two, two parts of the country where people will disagree what is they call. Some of them call it the chocolatine, and some of them call it the pain au chocolat. To, to me, if you go to the bakery and you want to order there, you just call it sa, and then, and then they will tell you what it is, and then you just know what is the right thing to order. 
So it's a fun fact. And next up after La Rochelle, so it is time for me to pursue for my master's. And then I went to University of Grenoble Alps. That's where I pro that's where I get my master's degree. So I went from all the way from the west coast to the east, east Alps of the France. So from the sea to the mountains, where you can see a big difference where, it, where on the west coast there is, there's a beach and sunshine. And then in the, in the east there is a mountain and very snowy. It's a very different climate. And I really like it a lot actually. So in with Grenoble uh, IAE, which is one of the business department or management school department in the University of Grenoble Alps, I did my master's in international manager. And I was again, the only Malaysians. And in my classroom, it is very, very special because my course is international manager. And in my class, 10 students are all from 10 different nationalities, including me, which is the only Malaysian. And after working, I also even, after uh, studying the master's degree, I also get the opportunity to work in the international office because of the language proficiency that I could speak. I could speak English, Mandarin, uh, and French, and also uh, a little bit of Malay. So this is where you can see here that uh, my classmate in the bottom left, in the bottom left, these are all 10 of my classmates. They are from, uh, they're like me from Malaysia, they're from Pakistan, from Nigeria, Sweden, Germany, Vietnam, uh, Turkish, uh, Colombian, Serbian, and also Iranian. So there are a lot of different different people coming to my class. And my actually my degree is very, very special. I think it is very, uh, it is very, very beneficial for the students who have this kind of international environment. And like I said, with, with the language, I have also, uh, also been very close with my colleagues after uh, doing the employment and the job that I found. So in the bottom left, you can see that me and my colleague have photos and it is during the winter time in Grenoble. So in Grenoble, I've actually taken advantage of the opportunity that I have and really, really visit a lot of different places. So these are just to name a few. In Grenoble, I went to Kupika, which is uh, one of the places where people jump off the cliff with the parachute, of course. So they have a lot of fancy parachute, parachuting. And also, also for me, visiting, for me in Malaysia, it is very rare to see people jumping off the cliff, but there it is so common and so uh, new. So I actually enjoyed it, watching people jumping off the cliff. And then also, if you want to win at anything, I would suggest as a Malaysian, just join the badminton competition because we are actually born with, we actually, we are relatively born with a badminton bat. So uh, they, they have a hard time beating us <laughs> anyway. And because in Grenoble is a very, very mountainous region. So I did a lot of hiking. And finally, my favorite, my new favorite spots, it's skiing, right? because you could never do it in Malaysia. And as a student, you get the very, very, reduced price of skiing that uh, that actually in contrast if you go to a place just to do skiing is very expensive but as a student it's so the discount is so humongous that actually skiing is actually not that expensive so uh, just to quickly finish up my, my uh, sharing so my advice as an alumni after like going through this process of education journey I would suggest that uh, first of all if you're going to France speak French I know if you're going with a friend or if you've seen other people from an Anglophone country, you will want to speak English with them. But you know, the majority of the time, if you are there, use it to speak French. It is very beneficial for you. It is very uh, good for you to get used to the language and also get used to the different uh, accents of the people, like the different students when they are speaking French. So because when you speak French, also, you need to also keep an open mind when you go to France because the culture is different. You have to be aware of that. And then to really benefit yourself and to grow yourself uh, personally, you have to keep an open mind when you're going to France. And I would say that to, to really enjoy your time in France, you need to make friends, in, especially with local people. Like I said, French people, they sometimes they seem cold or sometimes they don't really uh, smile a lot. That's because they don't know you, that you are not their friends yet. So you need to know that if you want to have a good time in France, make friends. And the best way to make friends is join clubs and society. As a student, as a student this is actually the best thing that is available for you because there are a lot of clubs and society that you can join and it, it is the best place for you to meet people especially the local people who is interested in the same subject as you are. 
So it is actually the best place for you to make friends and also to develop your uh, networks. Okay. And also from other than joining clubs and societies, also just look for a part-time job. Okay. You might not be necessarily flipping roti chanai in France, but but if you are like in France, if you're looking uh, looking for a job, like even bartending, being a restaurant, being a waiter, or working as a retail, these are actually jobs that actually could fund you uh, in your studies. And also partially, you actually learn to speak even more French because your jobs requires you to, which is what I can say from my experience, because when I was in France, my French really, really get picked up or get up to that level because, my, because of my part-time job. Because of my days when I was working in the, with the international office, where I met a lot of students, a lot of researchers. So when they talk to me, I get the opportunity to really, really uh, speak French. So yeah, that was a really, really good idea to look for a part-time job in France. You even get to develop the skills that you need to look for jobs when you're in France, even uh, before you graduate your universities and your studies. So the last thing I would say that you need to take the opportunity to explore so France is so big, there are so many things to do. So I've been to like Goma, to Strasbourg, uh, to different places around uh, France. Like you can see here, there's also NSC at the bottom left, uh, sorry, bottom right. And in France, even there are some of the like one major wonder sites that you should really, really go is like the Dune de Pilat. And also at the bottom, Mont Saint-Michel is like literally from the Disneyland where they take where, where they take from the movie and put it in France. So this is actually the opportunity. France is so big. There are so many different climate and so many different places and different regions that you can see. So when you're there for, for three or two years, just take advantage of it and then just travel, obviously within your budget limit. So this is my uh, little bit of my quick, quick sharing. So I'm always over forever grateful for all the experience that I have as a Malaysian student in during Thai college, as an Irish student in Ireland, and also as a French student. So this is, these are the very dynamic international experience that I have gained. And it is very, very, uh, it, is, it has been very, very beneficial for my personal development. Uh, yeah. So lastly, I would like to say thank you. If you want, if you students want to connect with me, I'm always welcome for anyone who wants to me about French, studying in France, my experience. And like I mentioned, I can speak Mandarin. So <laughs> So anything else, if you, are, if you want to just connect, stay connected, I'm always uh, happy to just be in connect with students who is interested in France. Or uh, even if you have, if you know someone who has been to France, want to connect with me, I'm always open to it. Even more, I'm happy to it. At least I have some more people to speak French with. <laughs> okay, so that is all for me. If you have any question, uh, the Q and A session is just next, just just right after. So yeah, just pop it in, and then we will try to answer it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. It's thank you very much, mostly for for sharing your experience in France. So now we move to the uh, question and answer session. So I saw that some of you uh, already started to type your question. Uh, so um, that Mark has already replied. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, well, uh, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that the questions were for everybody. <laughs> I thought it was private question to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no problem. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, some of them, like uh, for example, I have my Delph, which is Delph A2 and I haven't taken the SPM, can I apply study in France? Um, so for, if, for example, for a public university, let's say, uh, with a French, uh, in French language, uh, for example, you will need uh, the B2, the Delft B2 level, for example. Of course, for ESEC is different because the program is taught in English, for example, uh, and for the, the level required, it will be uh, the equivalent of the uh, A level, so STPM. But you can, uh, for example, after SPM, you can also do like a foundation program before studying in France, for example. Yeah. Uh, so feel free to also, you can type your question uh, on, the, on the text uh, box, on the question and answer box. Um, 
So Grand Ecole Program, uh, yeah, Mark uh, already replied. Um, can I, uh, so another question is, can I apply uh, to study in France with the Delph? So yes, if, you're, if the, the program is taught in French, then you would need to, to show, uh, to provide the Delph certificate uh, B2, if the program is in French. Uh, but we also have like programs taught in English. Uh, so for this programs taught in English, you don't need to show a DELF certificate. Okay. Uh, another question. Is there any requirements to join the universities in France? So yeah, just reply to this question. Um, the, the basic requirements for public universities, for example, uh, would be to have the equivalent of the A-level, the baccalaureate, uh, like the STPM, for example, to join a first year of bachelor uh, degree program. And if the program is in French, you would need to provide a B2 uh, DELF, for example, certificate. But of course, this uh, can vary according to the institution that you want to apply. So you need to check with the institutions about the, the requirements. Um, yes, uh, another question is about, can I apply to study in France with the UEC uh, results, right? So for this, um, the, um, uh, the UEC can be recognized uh, so by a certain uh, French higher education institutions. So for this application to French ed education of higher education uh, can be processed on a case-to-case -case basis. So for that, you have to get in touch with us so we can uh, liaise with the, the, the French university or school to know if uh, the, the UEC results uh, can be applicable to apply for universities in France. Yes, uh, one, one question is about the uh, cover letter or CV uh, when you apply. So sometimes some institution can apply, uh, can uh, request a CV or motivation letter. So that is very important, usually for uh, top schools, uh, maybe Sciences Po, uh, some business schools also may uh, ask for a CV and a cover letter. So yeah, it's quite important to, to write a very good uh, cover letter. It will definitely help uh, for your application. Uh, if um, Mariana or, or Mark uh, want to say something about the, the requirements uh, to complete uh, uh, the, the answers, feel free. Yeah, I, don't just, I, I mentioned this during my presentation, but I think what is very important is to be able to explain why you are um, choosing that school that you apply for and and also tell your story, like what makes you unique. Uh, so you really need to explain why you're applying to a certain school. You need to show that you are aware of the school, that you do, you've done some research about what the school offer, uh, offers and, um, and really think of how uh, you can bring some value, value to the school. So that's really my advice, what you uh, can bring to the school and what the school can offer you in terms of your career perspective. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for all your questions. So if you have like additional questions, uh, feel free to write to us um, at info at mfuc.org. We'll be very happy to answer all your questions. Um, so yes, thank you very much for attending uh, this session. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you to all the panelists uh, for joining this webinar. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.